leads me to uh, my next question, which is, is a whole food plant-based diet suitable for all stages of life? Absolutely. It absolutely is. With the exception, of course, of early infancy, when ideally for six months would be exclusive breastfeeding, mm -hmm. uh, or if for some reason mom can't breastfeed, then using, you know, a formula instead. Um, but yeah, having mom on a plant-based diet is fantastic for baby because you're getting all these great nutrients and mom tends to be feeling better and doing better. So the only key there is to add a DHA EPA supplement, 300 milligrams per day. Um, and again, to continue taking the prenatal, but the kinds of nutrients that mom will be getting on a whole food plant-based diet, they just knock out of the park what, you know, someone eating a standard diet would be getting. Mm -hmm. um, for kids, feeding them a, a plant-based diet, it is a gift. It is a gift. It is setting them up just in the short term. It's, you know, giving them a stronger immune system, but in the long run, and also lower risk of some, some allergies. So dairy is a really common allergen. And it's actually... It's actually a little grim. So in infants 12 years, 12 months and younger, um, whole milk, any dairy product that's not processed into a formula can actually trigger microscopic bleeding in the intestine. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the reasons that, for instance, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that no, you know, non-formula milk products be given to infants under 12 months. So mm -hmm. people think, oh, milk is good for kids. I'm like, oh, is it? Um, but again, you start kids on this kind of diet, you're already lowering their risk for heart disease. Some of these things like red meat during the teenage years is actually high intake of that is linked to an increased risk of breast cancer in adulthood. So by removing, because that's when breast tissue is developing. So by removing some of these riskier foods when kids are young, you're, you're really setting them up to have a lifetime of, of good health and happiness. So I just... Not only is it appropriate at all life stages, but it's beneficial at all life stages. And again, kids need more protein, kids need more calories. They're gonna do that, get that by eating more food. You know, kids need snacks, that's great. Give them healthy snacks. But it's, it's just, I wish more people knew about this because I wish more kids were able to get this kind of start in life because it really can set them up again it can avoid so much suffering and provide so much health and happiness that I just, I'm so glad you're doing this to get this message out. And again, for teens and adults, all of it's a very healthy way to eat. Mm -hmm. Actually some evidence that a low fat plant-based diet can even help with acne. So that's not, you know, it's not like a critical, we're going to, you know, prevent some horrible disease, but you know, having clear skin is nice. It's a nice touch. Oh, yeah. 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 I think especially for people who have like acne vulgaris or really severe acne. And right. I remember there's um, there's this family uh, that the husband started this website called Veg Source, and he had two twin daughters, and um, they were they grew up vegan, but then uh, when they were about 16, they started getting this severe acne, and they realized it was the added oils to yep. some of the foods they were eating. So even if they had a little bit of soy milk with some oils in it, they would get a, a reaction. But once they cut it out, all their acne was gone. So it's really interesting. Like it doesn't take too much in some cases. Right. To, like to show, oh, this is something coming. Like I know my partner uh, in terms of animal foods, if he has anything with a trace amount of dairy in it, uh, he gets severe like acne in his nose and the inside. So he's oh. like a detector. <laughs> So even if they don't say like there's dairy, but there's cross contamination, he'll find out because wow. yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, so it and what about like for senior senior citizens? So when you get yeah. up to that age group, and uh, a lot of times for women, it's recommended that they have milk to prevent osteoporosis. Uh, to take you know the vitamin D supplements uh, and just things like people are told like fish is healthy, like for heart health and uh, that sort of thing. And what can you say about those issues? So this is a, a great way to eat for people who are in their older years. Um, eating plant-based, there's so many issues to start. I think of people talking about fish being healthy and I wanna say, well, fish is like maybe less of an issue than other animal foods, but that doesn't make it the right or best choice. <laughs> Something can be less bad and still not be great. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of 
nutrition and aging, um, a plant-based diet actually can help protect against some of these diseases that, again, we normally associate with aging. Oh, well, everyone start, their blood pressure goes up or they start having mini strokes or, you know, they are having really severe arthritis. Like these are not necessarily just the result of aging. They're the result of aging plus lifestyle variables like a diet that just doesn't support health. So if you're eating a plant-based diet, it's going to help, you know, protect some of, protect against some of these things that, again, we think of as being an aging issue. Oh, well, you know, everyone gets heart disease as they age. Well, yes, everyone who eats this way does. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. So certainly in that regard, um, dairy for bone health. Wow. So there is no good evidence that I know of that dairy helps protect against hip fracture. And that's what we are really most concerned about with older women. Mm -hmm. So women after menopause do lose bone density at a higher rate um, than they did before menopause. But the big piece there is the bone breaks. Like that's what we really care about. And they're just, the data just isn't there to support that dairy is going to help that in any way. So certainly women do need calcium, much safer to get it from beans and greens. And interestingly, calcium is absorbed better from dark leafy greens with an exception of spinach, but absorbed better from dark leafy greens than from milk, dairy milk. So that's a fun little fact for people to take take to the bank with them. Um, and then also people think of vitamin D for milk. And vitamin D is not magically in milk. It's added to milk as a supplement. And people do need to get enough vitamin D, absolutely. Particularly, you know, if you're in a northern climate, um, vitamin D is typically made in the skin mm -hmm. when it is exposed to sun. And if you are if it's winter and you're all covered up and you're inside and you're at a high latitude where the sun just isn't very strong in the winter in the first place. Um, also for people who have darker skin that's built in sunscreen, which is great, except that it can also block the, the conversion, the activation of vitamin D in the skin, which we need for health. So I think there is some, there, it's, a, it's a good idea to get vitamin D levels checked mm -hmm. because we are you know, we're indoors, we're covered up, we're not getting the sun exposure we would naturally. So particularly for older people, but really for everyone to get their vitamin D levels checked and if it's low, then to take a supplement. There is sensible sun exposure as well, but again, in the winter, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> um, yeah, so there, that is one of those times that a supplement certainly makes sense if you test and your levels are low. But again, there's no magic to vitamin D in dairy products or animal products generally, again, we're designed to make it in our skin from the sun mm -hmm. and modern lifestyles have very much changed that dynamic. So we do have to do some things to, to remedy that. But um, it's just, I look at this in terms of overall health and just in my own family. So I know that my dad has started shifting this way and his arthritis symptoms improve. I mean, it's not, again, it's not a magic fix. Right. Yeah. Go away, but it improves it. Um, I have to brag on my mom here because yeah. She, post-menopause in her mid-60s, lost over 100 pounds following a whole food plant-based diet. Um, and she's doing much better now. She's so much more mobile. She, you know, can get down and play with the grandkids and jump up and run around. And it's just, it's a, it's a, it just gives me such joy to see what this has done for her and brought her blood pressure down. So I just have to brag on her a little bit. But again, and it wasn't, you know, it took a few years and it wasn't like a magical fix. There is no magic fix in the world, but mm -hmm. it really is an effective way to not just lose weight, even after menopause and a lot of women think it can't be done, mm -hmm. uh, but also to bring back health and vibrancy that I just hadn't seen in her in years. So I just want to share that at any age, this can really have some incredible health benefits. Yeah, and I think it was uh, Dr. Dean Ornish who said, like, it doesn't matter how old you are or, um, you know, what stage you are in terms of, like, a chronic degenerative disease. It's, like, how closely you follow the whole food plant-based diet how, or lifestyle, basically, is he includes some stress manage management and some moderate exercise, which could be, like, just a half-hour walk a day. Um, but, yeah, I, I think one of the things people are looking for because they're they are looking for a quick fix but like 
these conditions, they take years to develop. Like, yeah, I think yeah. that we see them, it's more um, prevalent now, like here in, in Newfoundland, uh, we have one of the worst rates of childhood obesity in all of Canada. And there's a lot of children who have, you know, food allergies and asthma and just a lot of things that are really kind of these biomarkers of these chronic degenerative diseases and children yeah. getting type 2 diabetes when it used to be adult onset diabetes. Right. right. So it'll take, like it's like you were saying, uh, I think, you know, people are going to get, um, like within seven days, they'll start to feel the difference when they choose oh, yes. the food. But if, if you have been eating a certain way for a long time, you will need to give yourself a bit of time for all of your symptoms to kind of feel an ease or, you know, maybe not go away completely, but give it some time to get better. Yeah. And it really, the incredible thing is that we can take conditions that people may have had even for decades and start to reverse them. Maybe it can be fully reversed and maybe we can only just get it better. Mm -hmm. But that's amazing that the body is so resilient that if you just put in the right fuel and give it, you know, also, of course, you know, exercise and stress management, if you just give it what it needs, it will respond and heal. It's just, it's just the most, I keep saying rewarding, but it's, you know, for myself working with my own, cause you know, no one, everyone's got health issues working with my own issues, working with patients. It's just incredible to see what, what these whole plant foods can do, even with things that have been set up since childhood, like you said. Yeah. And so I, I, my last question 